The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello, my name is James. Welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. On this show, we review the tools on your electronics workbench. We've done a series on instrument basics videos, which got me thinking it's time to review the Analog Discovery 2 from Digilent. It's a USB-based all-in-one measurement tool. Let's see if this belongs on your workbench. The Analog Discovery features two analog channels for an oscilloscope, function generator, and voltmeter. It also has two programmable power supplies, a network analyzer for Bode plots, a spectrum analyzer, an impedance analyzer, a protocol analyzer, and 16 digital channels. Those can be a combination of logic analyzer, pattern generator, or virtual I.O. Also, the software is very configurable with built-in JavaScript and an API for both C++ and Python. Now is a good time for me to mention, I bought this unit myself. I decided to do a review on it since it seemed like an excellent follow-up to the Instrument Basics series. Okay, let's go take a look at some of its capabilities. First up, the oscilloscope. It has a sample rate of 100 mega samples per second with an analog bandwidth depending on how you connect. My measurements suggest it is around 10 megahertz. Trigger modes support auto, normal, and single, but the only trigger type is an edge. Even though there are no physical knobs, the mouse wheel works for both horizontal and vertical settings. Under the view menu are some additional capabilities. For example, measurements include the standard vertical and horizontal parameters like peak to peak voltage and frequency. There is also an FFT, histogram and XY mode available as well. Physically though, I find it frustrating that there are only two female header connectors. How do I connect this to a circuit? The base analog discovery does not come with anything like a mini grabber. One option is to purchase this external board. With it, both the scope and waveform generator are compatible with BNC cables and traditional scope probes. Oh, and then that means you also need to buy a scope probe too. I don't want to dwell on those negatives though. There is a good solution which I cover in the end. For now, let's move on to the arbitrary waveform generator. The generator has its own analog channels so that it can run at the same time as the scope. The sine wave runs up to 10 MHz, and there are other waveforms built in. You can also define your own either as a math script or a CSV file. Additionally, there is the ability to do a frequency sweep and add modulation. Here you can see FM and AM applied to a 1 MHz square wave. Oh, and did I mention the scope has a persistence view as well? With that turned on, you can clearly see the FM and AM modulation from the waveform generator. There are two independent power supplies supporting plus or minus five volts. When powered by USB, the combined maximum power is 500 milliwatts. However, you can also attach an external brick to provide up to 2.1 watts or 700 milliamps on each of the supplies. Compared to a real bench supply, this is relatively weak, but for this size, I think it is a good compromise. However, I am disappointed there does not appear to be a way to set a current limit. On the other side of the screen, I'm using the Analog Discovery's voltmeter. As is, it can only measure voltage, so it is not a full digital multimeter. It is using the same analog inputs as the oscilloscope, which means it can measure up to 50 volts peak to peak. But on the downside, you cannot do voltmeter and oscilloscope measurements at the same time. Although, I guess you could just turn on measurements on one of the scope channels. That'd be about the same as using the voltmeter. I didn't think of that. Okay, next up are some instruments I have not done any videos on yet. The network analyzer feature uses the waveform generator and analog channels to characterize circuits like this RC filter. It plots the magnitude and phase across frequency, 
also known as a Bode plot. The yellow trace is the input signal, while the blue trace is the filter's output. When building a filter, it is necessary to understand the capacitive, inductive, and resistive elements of the filter components. For that, you need an impedance analyzer. For these measurements to work, you do need to add a resistor to the circuit. While you can hook up wires directly, an alternative is to use this impedance analyzer adapter. It plugs into the analog discovery and then you connect components like a capacitor. It has built-in resistors that you select in the GUI. From here, the analyzer plots characteristics like impedance and capacitance across frequency. I think the impedance analyzer is my favorite feature and I think the adapter is worth buying. But we are not done yet. Let's take this to a different level and talk about digital measurements. There are 16 digital inputs available. You can use them in three ways, as a logic analyzer, a protocol analyzer, or a pattern generator. To demonstrate the protocol and logic analyzer, I am using an Arduino Uno connected with the included extended header pins. The Arduino is sending a serial message, toggling several of its pins, and then sending another message. In the analyzer, you can see I have the trigger set to an edge and captured the entire sequence. But when I zoom in, notice the serial data has framing errors. I need more capture memory to get faster sample rate. So in the Discovery's device manager, there are different configurations for the tool. Number four provides more memory for the logic analyzer, but it takes some of it away from the scope. Now when the logic analyzer runs, it samples much faster. As I zoom in, you can see that the serial message was the word start. I can also set the trigger to be a serial character like capital S. By the way, the logic analyzer can also be used to trigger the oscilloscope. Last, I have a few comments about the Discovery software. The software for the analog Discovery is called Waveforms. As you can see, it is incredibly flexible. Each of the instruments is a panel, allowing you to configure a user interface for whatever measurements you are doing. I have not had a chance to dive into custom scripting yet, but Waveforms looks very extensible. For example, you can define custom math functions as a scope channel, or in the logic analyzer, you can specify a custom protocol and have it decode as the standards do. And Waveforms also supports an SDK for writing applications in C++ or Python. By the way, the Waveform software is a free download and includes demo instruments, so you can check out the environment without having to invest in the hardware. Speaking of, let's go take a look at the device itself. Opening up the analog discovery was not really necessary. First, the case is, well, clear. And second, Digilent's documentation not only shows schematics, but also explains how the discovery subcircuits work. The main ICs are the Spartan 6 FPGA and a 14-bit ADC. On the back is the 14-bit digital to analog converter for the waveform generator. You know, I just realized I forgot to show the spectrum analyzer. So I'm going to use this near field probe to measure electromagnetic emissions around the board. If I hold the probe above these shielded components, we see some very large spikes. Using the cursors, we can see that the spur is around 600 kilohertz. My guess is that it's the switching frequency of the buck converter. I really admire the clean look of the PCB. The analog discovery is a very nice piece of kit. Okay, let's go talk about the good and bad. Long story short, I really like the Analog Discovery 2. It has the right mix of capabilities. The specifications make the right trade-offs, multiple instruments can be used at the same time, and the software is highly flexible. However, on the negative side, there are a few things that bother me. The flying leads aren't well color-coded, like why didn't they just use the resistor color code for the digital channels? And without something like mini grabbers, the female header pins are of limited use. The logic channels have a fixed threshold for 3.3 volt logic, but they are 5 volt tolerant, so yeah, there's that. I did mention the shallow memory for the logic analyzer already, and on the oscilloscope, it only has an edge trigger. In fact, of all of those things, the current limit or lack of current limit is the only one that really bugs me. So that leaves just one last question. Would I buy one? 
Well, as I said at the start, I already did buy one. This is my personal unit. The base unit costs around 280 US dollars, but there is a pro bundle, which includes the BNC adapter board, mini grabbers, and two oscilloscope probes, which only adds $20 to the price. So my recommendation is just buy that bundle. It is a great value. Now, if you're a student or hobbyist, I would give the analog discovery a strong consideration. For the price of the cheapest instrument on my bench, you get all of the essential tools you need in a single unit. Yes, there are some compromises, but for basic electronics, the specs are enough. Professional users might consider the analog discovery for two reasons. First, it is a useful piece of kit to have on your desk when working with stuff away from the lab. And second, it's great to travel with, which is the reason I bought mine. You know, for those late night Arduino debugging sessions in a hotel room. Okay, I'm weird, but it's still a good reason. For show notes, head over to Element 14. They include links to all of the Instrument Basics videos and the Digilent products I showed in this video. By the way, that is the best place to ask me questions because I'm more likely to see them and it is way easier for me to respond there. For now, it is time for me to get back to measuring all the things at once on my electronics workbench.